So this is the 15 foot gate that is going along the wall here. And uh, this is where sailors trailers and things, harvesters, mowers and things will be coming in and out. So 15 foot is plenty. Um, as you can see, the gravel doesn't go the whole way out to the end. We're going to have to fix that. The hay mac will be back um, after the sail is just cut to clean drains along this field to get that root gone that I hate. I've talked about so much at this stage. And um, yeah, we're going to widen this, widen it slightly and bring it further, further back and further into here. Um, as you can see, the wall is drying out nicely. Very happy with it. It's in now about five, six days. We are wetting it three times a day. Because uh, it is, you don't want it drying out too fast, or a good possibility it would crack. So we have wetted a lot now, and it um, looks looks really well. It finishes off really well. I'm over the moon with that wall, so I am. And um, how well it turned out. I'm very glad I did it that way. Uh, so we get this one hung. Uh, ESB pole. This time we have a good few of them sitting about, and um, we have a couple over there that were in before we had to take out. Uh, the gates were already on here in this place, so I took them out and um, they're perfectly fine. I'm going to knock the concrete off them and reuse them. Um, so this is a lighter one, this was the top of the pole, so I'm going to use that as a latch. And then um, it'll be a great stay. Once it's cemented in and left sit for a good while just to, just to properly set, it'll be brilliant for, for uh, pulling the wire to when we get this whole place wired up, which is another job we're going to probably start tackling now in the next few days. So this is my mixer. A uh, handy little yoke that I bought about just probably a little over 20 years ago. Um, it's an Alstrad Conmix. Probably don't make them anymore. It's, it's as I say, it's an old mixer, electric mixer, but uh, it has done a world of work. Um, and it's actually still in good condition. I know it might look a bit dusty and all. We do wash it. Um, I did give it out to a man back about 10 years ago. And to be honest with you, um, it was the worst thing I'd done because it came back with a lot of cement stuck to it. I would wash it, always wash it and take it home if it was away from the farm and power wash it when I'm done, get all the cement off it. But I give it out. Unfortunately, uh, it just wasn't cleaned and left back a week later. And yeah, you know yourself when you give things away. But, but look at uh, another thing that went on it there last year was the motor. Um, so I had to decide whether I was going to put a motor in it or uh, just replace the mixer. But I put a motor in it, I think it was about 120 euro um, and a new couple of drive belts. They're very, very simple. There's very little can go wrong with them. There's a dry bearing in there that you don't really grease um, in there and, and it's perfect on it. Um, as I say, the drum and all is perfect. I don't hammer it or bang it. I just use it for my own use, uh, apart from the motor going, which to be honest with you, I cannot fault it for because it was just worn out. It had done so much work. Um, it was just worn out and a new motor now and it just, it runs absolutely brilliantly. We just turn it on here now. So it's lovely and smooth and everything. Great little mixer. Every, every farmer should have their own, their own little cement mixer. Um, whether it's pets or electric. Pets is probably handy too, a little bit more expensive. But um, this works for me, especially now when I have power in the new shed, I can bring it over here now and do any wee bits and pieces of jobs. I need to do. So just for any use that do a small bit of DIY or thinking about doing a little bit of work yourself. I'm um, sorry with the wind noise, I'm hoping that it's not too bad. Um, this is just coarse sand and I mean coarse, it's got a little bit of stone in it. You can see there, plenty of bits of stone in it. That's what you want when you're putting in a base, um, a foundation or cementing around posts as we're doing um, or putting in a concrete yard. That's the type of sand you need to use. Um, on the other hand, you have your smooth sand Again, people just don't know. That's your smooth sand there, and that's for your building. Um, plaster and sand would tend to be a little bit less coarse than that. If you look at that, that is quite coarse. Plaster and sand would be a little bit smoother than that. Um, I always look at this black sand, and there's yellow or mustard color, whatever you want to call it sand. There's two different types. I don't see the real difference. The only thing I notice with the brighter colored sand is it's more inclined to be the one I'd use for plastering. Um, if I was using any because it's just that little bit softer it's it's just you want it smooth when you're if you want to get a nice finish on your plaster don't forget to wet your mixer might seem obvious people just wouldn't do it give your wet mixer a good wetting but the cement won't stick to it
that's, that's it i just dump it straight into the box from the mixer very handy i wet the box down beforehand but when i get home i'll power wash the box out properly and um, so you don't want any cement and things stuck to the box and um, it just leaves it untidy looking and not only that anything stuff can stick to it then clay and things will be inclined to stick to the to the surface of the box when you leave it like that so um it's worth it's worth taking it just a few minutes to wash it out I have loads of spirit levels at home because I do a lot of my own building work and things but this is a little cheap one I picked up um, actually at a market, a local market and it's got two magnetic strips built into it so very handy for doing this job especially because you can stick your spirit level on it and it will stay on it while you're putting in your post and cost about 10 euro or something like that and it was one of the handiest little things I ever bought Get your stones Throw them down. Just another quick tip. Try to keep them away from the post if you can. Them laying up again the post offers that little bit of movement um, between the post and the stone. So if you keep them out, so the cement can be between the stone and the post, it's much stronger. Hope that makes sense. Now some of you may wonder why I put the holes um, on this side rather than having them facing out here. What people normally do is get these lads here and you put the bolt through here, put your nut on here, and then hang your gate that way. Well, the reason for that is, some of you can probably tell, but I hang the gate, I'll put the bolt through here and hang the gate on this side next to the field so that the gate will be hanging on this inside rather than the side of the off the post. They'll be hanging to the near side and then what'll happen is I'll be fit to open my gate out further. So I can open my gate right in there at a nice angle that'll be kind of out of the way of uh, of machinery going up and down because if I hung it on this side it'll only open a certain distance before it'll hit again the bar here and that way that the more could hit off it. It doesn't, look at it's not a huge issue but when you hang it on the inside like that it means also means the gate won't be able to open this way which I don't want it opening in on the lane so. And another issue you can have with that is a tire of a tractor um, can hit the, the spud or the eye, if you want to call it, of the bolt or the hanger and it can easily tear a tractor or damage a gate very easily. So again, I put loads and loads of, of stones in there as you've seen, loads of big stones, pounded it down nicely. There's two and a half, almost three feet of uh, cement in there and it's a good strong mix and uh, that'll be a good secure job. This is a little tool here that we're going to bore through this post. Um, I'm going to be putting in these uh, gate hangers, we're just going to be fitting them through here. But you might, none of you might have never seen one of these before. It's a real old school uh, cordless drill, if you like to call it. I um, don't know, it's probably a Dewalt or something like that, no. But I have Dewalt stuff at home. Um, but this is great for going through these real tough posts. Kind of hard in any drill. Um, had it for a long, long time. This has been in our farm a long time. Um, it's still in very good condition, I keep it sharp. But I don't use it very often, but it does its... Uh, does its job when it's needed, so we'll get cracking on this. So, uh, we have this gate put in, concreted in now. I put this uh, four inch plastic pipe into the ground. It's down about uh, three foot. And um, we have that cemented in. When that sets, I'll just cut the top of it off here. And then uh, I'll be fit to slide in the kind of a latch and division gate here. And we put the set our heights and things. The reason um, I'm doing that, some people just tie the gates together or you can make a bracket that slides over both gates. Reason being is there's a hell of a slope um, where we are here at the minute. Might uh, probably isn't showing up on the camera, but there is. Um, so you see, if I was to hang this, these both these gates together, um, the way I have them at the moment, this gate here would be below the ground. It'd be underneath um, this pass, um, which would be no good. It wouldn't open out in the field. A uh, way around that would have been to hang this gate much higher. Um, 
and then I would have, you know, alleviated, but it would have had that hang that an awful lot higher to get that um, taken out of it, and it wouldn't look great. So what I'll do is instead, I'll put the division gate in here, leave it fairly high, and then I'll be fit to hang this gate higher than this gate. So we'll have a step up for the next gate. It should look okay. Um, I'm not really worried. It'll be practical. Um, it'll be good and secure. It'll be all on latches and. Um, and all I have to do then with the sleeve in is just pull the middle post out when I want to open the boat gates or just go in and out of this gate um, when I'm doing small jobs. So what I'm at now at the minute is I don't like to pull wire to get to get hanging posts. Um, you can do it, I just don't like doing it, especially to these. I could weld on a little bracket that you can um, affix the tensioners onto it for pulling barbed wire. It's a brave strain. Um, and there's no real need for it so what i do tend to do now this last while is i do drive a strainer well that's only a seven foot but it's still a seven foot heavy post i drive it in um about two three foot away from this post here pull the wire to it and then finish the last wee piece with the uh, railing timber railings do the same on this side as well whenever we know exactly where this post is going That's that in there now. Um, just goes to show you how handy that post driver is. It was uh, an X higher machine, but it only had done six months work. So it was like new when I got it. Sitting outside, um, it's a bit faded in the paint and things like that, but it's an Everlast machine. They're ferociously strong built. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's an investment that I really am glad that I, I bought. Um, I was borrowing ones before of a neighbor who was very generous. He always gave me one, it's the exact same model as this. And I said, you know, you just hate going to people's houses, always looking for something or borrowing something. So bit by bit, I tried to get my own things and that was something that I'm really glad I purchased. It has a side tilt on it. So you can, you're on an uneven ground, you have a certain amount of side tilt back and forth on one ram that just sits there on, on, on one side. Um, and yeah, uh, it, it it is it is super now. It's it's a super machine to have. So we're getting there. Uh, nice bit of wiring to be done. It's a wee bit awkward if it was a straight line, piece of cake. You do an hour do the whole thing, but unfortunately it's all in a little bit of an awkward area. Ah, it's not going to take me an awful long time to do. Cheap wire is something I don't really do an awful lot or use an awful lot. I'm only putting it here because it's neater. It'll probably look better around the shed. Um, but as regards fencing, I would never use it. Briars along a hedge and things tend to pull it down, and I don't like it for that reason. Um, I'd use barbed wire usually for everything I'd do, but here there's not really any chance of anything pulling it down, so um, it'll just leave it nice and tidy and completely secured off. The gate, I have it hung now and I have it latched in. We have this gate hung, and um, we put the hanging post on uh, yesterday. So we'll give it a couple of days to dry and then we'll bore the two holes just to latch it in. So that's it. That's my bit of shenanigans for the day. Um, I'll get that wire up now probably in the next few days, maybe at the weekend. Today is Wednesday, so I'll have a bit more help at the weekend. I might get the kids to help me. Um, they're kind of flooded with homework now and they're not really enjoying that. Um, but homeschooling is actually tougher uh, on parents than it is on children. It's nice to get all this work finished because there's other jobs that I need to get done and uh, having this kind of ticked off the sheet is uh, one step closer than getting them jobs done. You can always know this on your head to get these things finished if you don't get it done. So you're better off just take into it, get it done and finish with it. I don't do many shout outs, but um, there's one guy who shared a few photos of mine on the farm and um, I'd like to just give him a quick shout out. He's put up a lot of photos and things of tractors, machinery, and I think a lot of you that are following me might actually like this. So he's official Irish Agri. There he is there now on Instagram, and he seems to have um, a lot of a lot of photos going up each day. So some of you might enjoy that. So tip over there, give him a like, give him a follow, give him a bit of support. 
So I'm just finishing off actually editing this video and I say that I just put an extra clip at the end um, here just to acknowledge that our channel is fast approaching 10,000 subscribers. 10,000 subscribers, it just, it just doesn't sound real to me. Um, to some people it mightn't seem a lot um, that are at this a long time but to me to be added in such a short space of time, even even if it was added for a couple of years, I never imagined uh, um, our channel would draw this sort of attention. So, um, yeah, I get messages on Facebook, Instagram, um, and then obviously the comments on YouTube. But it's great support. I've got nothing but but positive feedback, and so thank you each and every one of you for that. Um, it's been a bit one of the best things that we have ever done. And um, I really, really am enjoying it and I'll put more and more time into it. Um, and family will probably come into it as time goes by. They'll be introduced more and more into the videos. Um, we just wanted to really give it a test for us and see how things was going. So thank you to each and every one of you who have subscribed or watched or liked any of our videos. And um, we'll do something special for that uh, 10,000 sub video. I'm not sure what it'll be yet. Now people are asking for a farm tour. Yes, we will do a farm tour, but we've sighted things coming up at the moment and we're moving machinery kind of out of the way at the minute. So I want to wait until um, there'll be a right time to do that and you'll be able to see everything a bit more clearly. But um, no, we'll, we'll, we'll come up with something. Uh, if you have any ideas what we could do for that 10th anniversary, please just put them put it in the comment box below. Um, but bear in mind, uh, I don't always get back to everyone because we're getting a lot more messages now um, and it's just impossible. It's impossible to, to reply to them all when you're doing your day's work as well. So, But I do read them and I do appreciate them, so keep them coming. Um, but we'll figure out something, maybe a live feed, maybe something down that line. I'm not even sure how you do a live feed, but I'm, I'll work it out. Um, but we'll do something. Just wanted to take that opportunity to thank each and every one of you very much and huge thumb up to you and we'll talk to you very soon in the next one.